So I decided to dial down my coffee and it may have been a bad mistake. <laughs> Driven mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. All right, I gave up coffee only for four days, <laughs> but here's what happened. Now, I talk quite a lot about vices and why vices are so critical to get rid of. Now, I don't really consider coffee a vice or anything like that. You know, I have it if I feel like it, and if I don't, I don't. But it's been a fair while since I gave up, not saying that I gave up, but that I stopped drinking coffee. And I do this every now and again where I will just stop having something just to make sure that it's not a vice. But what I realized this time is it's been a fair while since I hadn't had coffee. So I just said to Jess, you know, I'm going to stop drinking coffee for a couple of days and see what happens. Now, my goal was to do three days I knocked out four, but what I found straight away was the first day wasn't too bad. The second day, I felt so fatigued and tired. I brought up with her that it was so interesting that I felt so fatigued and tired on the second day after not consuming coffee because what had been happening was the previous two months, we'd been working flat out, like crazy flat out. You know, we've just had the brand new launch of our website. If you haven't checked it out yet, go to michaelmojo.com. I've launched a whole bunch of health coaching programs, fitness coaching, mindset coaching, business coaching programs. We just launched our brand new online membership hub called Dominate, which is awesome. So it's a monthly subscription, but it breaks everything down into these 90-day blocks. And so over 90 days, you work on your mindset, then you go into either health or relationships or money and finance. And so it took me ages to build that out. You know, there's every week there is a brand new video that gets released, which is, you know, a 20 to 40 minute video on a topic. And then your goal is to go execute it and create these habits. So we've just been working flat out plus the podcast. And then we had our last Odyssey event ran in November and our Thrive Time event ran end of October as well. So we'd run two massive events, then brand new website, new membership hub, you know, coaching programs. Plus then we had filming. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you go check out Michael Mojo on Instagram. We got all this brand new content going out like shit's crazy. So I was just smashing coffee. Some of you know this game, right? You have one coffee a day, then it turns into two, then it turns into three. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, man, I've just had four double shot coffees today. This is getting out of control. So I knew it started to become a bit of a vice. So I decided to dial it back. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to go four days, cold turkey, not dial it back. I'll just stop. And this is sort of how I do most things is if I just decide that enough's enough, I just stop doing it. So day one, not too bad. Day two, fatigued, tired. I think I slept for like over a two-day block. It was almost a whole two days. Like on day two and day three, all I did was sleep. And then I would wake up for a couple of hours, feel fatigued. I'd eat a little bit and then I'd go back to bed. And... Only yesterday, which was day four, so today I'm on day five, I'm just having my first coffee as I do this podcast now. But what I noticed was the clarity of emotions that came up was just different. Now, what I noticed was that this coffee intake that I was using as a vice was suppressing my emotional states and probably jacking me up mentally and emotionally. So although I would feel energetic throughout the day, what I found was that my sleeping patterns were slowly starting to get affected just in that last week. And that's why I decided to just cut the coffee up because I noticed that my sleeping patterns were getting affected. And, you know, I think it was just time. It was just time to just stop it. But over the last four days, I noticed the clarity of my emotions that were coming up. You know, I noticed that I was on a meeting. I was on a marketing meeting with a brand new marketing agency that we're looking at doing some work with. And just sitting in there, it was a big hour and a half meeting going right through all of our social platforms, all of our online marketing, all of our digital assets, like everything. And I just noticed that all of a sudden I started feeling this discomfort and I felt like I was not in control. I wasn't out of control, but I just felt like I didn't have control of the situation because normally I know a lot about a lot, but some of the stuff that they were diving into, I didn't really know about. I mean, I knew about them, but I just didn't know how to execute it or how to make sure that it got done properly. And so I felt this discomfort. And I wouldn't have normally felt that discomfort because I would have been jacked up on caffeine and just, you know, going flat out and, and probably being on my phone at the same time as I was in the middle of a meeting. And, you know, I normally push pretty hard. But it was just really interesting to me the amount of 
emotional clarity that I had when I stopped the coffee, just only after four days. Now, I couldn't imagine the emotional shit that comes up for people when they stop using alcohol as a vice or drugs as a vice like cocaine or, you know, methamphetamines or, you know, even painkillers because they subdue our emotions way more than what coffee does. Coffee, you know, will jack us up and make us a little bit hyperactive and generally tend to stimulate us. But when you're looking at other drugs or alcohol or other substances of abuse, especially pain medication, which is heavily used in this country or antidepressants, any anxiety medication, I can't imagine the clarity of emotions that come up that then can be dealt with. Now, what it did was because of what I teach at our Thrive Time event, especially around balancing out your emotions and creating clarity around your life purpose, your life mission and, and things like that, what it allowed me to do was the clarity of the emotions that came up it allowed me to tap into those and then balance them out so that then I got my learning and my awareness around them. And now I don't have them. So today I'm not like, today I feel pretty balanced. There's some stuff that still sort of come up a little bit. It really made me want to talk about this on the podcast that when people use vices, drugs, alcohol, pharmaceutical medication, especially painkillers, any anxiety, any depressants, anything that helps us to numb our emotions, even food, what it really is doing is it's just suppressing those emotions until eventually they just squirt out somewhere. And they're going to come out at ineffective times because you're going to impulsively display them. And so, you know, I think that it's really important this time of year to talk about our impulses and our vices because most people are going to go into the Christmas break drinking, taking drugs, you know, using more medication. There's more stresses and pressure because of family, because of money and finances. And I think all it's going to do is that every time you use a substance of abuse or a vice that you're using to suppress those emotions, whether it be food or anything, all it's going to do is it's going to make things worse in the future. Now, for me, it just gave me clarity as to around how unaware I was of the emotions that I was feeling. Now, I'm lucky because I have tools to deal with them. For those who don't have tools to deal with their emotions when they come up, I understand why vices are important and why people use those substances. But at the same time, it stops you from progressing and moving forward because you can't identify what's actually going on. And what it showed me in this meeting was that I really, really, really need to be more aware of how I'm feeling about things because those feelings are essentially causing erratic, impulsive decision-making or fears to pop up that don't need to be there. Now, you can imagine that if I keep suppressing the fear that I have around the business growth and business growing and not having control over things, then that's obviously going to cause big problems in the business eventually. Or the other thing is that I jack myself up on caffeine and I make decisions impulsively and erratically because I just want to get shit done and I don't want to deal with those fears. But then that's just going to create more fear because fear always creates more fear. That's why something that I know that 99% of you, in fact, every one of you probably listening to this podcast probably spends the majority of your life thinking about fear, worry, stresses, pressure, which are all fear responses, not your goals, your dreams, your missions, your visions, and the things that you're really trying to strive for in life. Just be careful of those substances. Just be careful of your vices. Really identify how you suppress your emotions. Okay, which one is it? Some people use chocolate. Some people overeat. Some people overspend. Some people gamble. Some people use drugs. Some people use alcohol. Some people get caught up in other people's drama. But I guarantee that almost everyone who's listening to this has a vice that you use when you don't want to deal with your emotions or you don't want to deal with shit that's coming up. I highly recommend that you let that stuff come up and then figure out how to deal with it. Now, if you haven't already grabbed your ticket to my Thrive Time event or the online platform, or you're not part of Dominate, then grab hold of it and, and jump in and start dealing with those things. Because if you don't deal with them, eventually they deal with you. Okay. And so, you know, I really wanted to talk about this because I don't think society talks about this enough. But for me, fuck, it was an eye-opener because I just haven't been aware that caffeine and being jacked up all the time really is suppressing something that maybe has been around for a long, long time that I just haven't been aware of. Whereas now I'm aware of it so I can deal with it. But anyway, I'm going to go back and have my coffee right now <laughs> anyway. But it's one coffee today and then we'll see what happens tomorrow, whether I feel like another one or whether I just want to go back to not really having any. So just be aware of the emotions that your vices are suppressing. Let them come up deal with them, keep moving on, and really keep focused on the things that you want in life, not the things that you're afraid of, okay, or any of the negative emotions, because the more you focus on them, the more they expand. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking ass, especially during this festive season. 
you know, keep your standards high, keep pushing hard, have a great festive season. Take care, everyone. I'll see you on the next episode. Most people waste their life, and I just don't want you to be one of them.